So when regional champion, YouTuber, and friend of the channel JoeUX9 invited me to participate in a Smash Bros VGC tournament, I had no idea what that meant. He elaborated and said it'd be a partner tournament where a Smash content creator and VGC content creator would get paired up and go against other teams in the VGC style multi-battle format. Along with that, we'd play against those same teams in another event that was a Smash Bros doubles tournament. For the VGC tour, we were only allowed to use Pokemon that have appeared in some way in the Smash Bros franchise, whether that be as a character or in the Pokeball item. As for Smash, we were only allowed to play with Pokemon characters and only on Pokemon stages. When I found out my partner would be Hopcat, I was hyped because I knew that we had a solid shot of winning the whole thing together, the Pokemon tournament and the Smash tournament. Then he slept through the Smash Bros event because he lives in Australia and the event would have began at 3am for him. So yeah, uh, I lost that tournament. But I did have a sub in shirtless Luke to play with, so here's my favorite clip from that run. Go for it. It was, Weedle, yes, that was kind of toxic, I, I will admit. Moving on to the part that matters, Hopcat eventually woke up just in time for the VGC event, so I quickly forgave him and we got into the tournament. But let's pause here. In order to not have the tournament basically be VGC players calling out moves for their less experienced Smash Bros partners, we weren't allowed to communicate in any way during the matches, unless we decided to use a lifeline. The Smash Bros player got three lifelines, one to consult the partner over the call, one to consult their chat, and one to google some info they didn't know. They were allowed to use each lifeline once per game, and in a best of one match, they needed to use them intelligently or risk losing it all. Due to this constraint, I had to team build with two things in mind. What kind of team would do well in this strange Smash Bros metagame, and how can I make it as intuitive as possible to ensure my partner could operate in tandem with me without talking to him? Each team was allowed to use two legendary restricted Pokemon, so this was my most important decision, as these Pokemon would carry us through the games more than any other on the team. I ended up going with Kyogre as one of my picks due to the fact just about anyone could spam Choice Scarf Water Spout and cheese out a few wins, especially in this kind of tournament. For my second pick, I did a bit of metagaming and I knew Xerneas would be a very popular pick due to the fact the VGC player could just instruct the Smash player that clicking Geomancy turn 1 and spamming Dazzling Gleam could cheese out a few games, so I counterpicked by building a specially defensive Solgaleo, which not only hard checks Xerneas, but could tank a Water Spout from Kyogre and eat a hit from Groudon thus activating its weakness policy and dealing major damage back to it. My third pick was a Ditto. Due to the fact that each team was allowed to use two restricted Pokemon, I could strategically use Ditto to steal an opposing Pokemon like Xerneas after they set up a Geomancy, or copy a Kyogre to effectively have two of them on my team. My fourth pick was a Tapu Koko, an electric fairy type, whose utility moves like Electroweb along with Electric Terrain could not only make my Kyogre much safer to play, but also deal with opposing Kyogre while preventing sleep from Venusaur. I paired this with what I believe to be my riskiest pick. See, when I originally built the team, I didn't know we were allowed to use Pokemon that were playable characters in Smash. I thought it was just the Pokeball items. So I didn't include an Incineroar on my team despite how good it objectively is. I instead went with Nololan Raichu due to it also having Fake Out and just being a menace in electric terrain with Rising Voltage and its ability Surge Surfer. Then I forgot to give it Fake Out. Moving on, my final pick was Mimikyu. This would definitely pull its weight on the team. Disguise allows it to take one hit essentially for free to get off a Trick Room, but I wanted to make sure that running Shadow Sneak plus Weakness policy for Solgaleo wouldn't deal too much damage to it, thus making it easy pickings for a Kyogre's Water Spout. So I did something really, really weird and I made my Mimikyu a minus attack nature and gave it zero attack IVs. While it wouldn't deal much damage with Shadow Sneak to anything, it also would deal minimal damage with Shadow Sneak to my Solgaleo while still activating its weakness policy and then rely on support moves like the Tekton Curse to carry its weight for the team. So the team essentially had three modes, Scarf Water Spout spam, Trick Room Solgaleo and Mimikyu, and then Raichu and Coco Electric Spam. All of them were super easy to follow and I had faith Hopcat could operate the team without me even communicating. Okay, round one. Hopcat and I were up against Battle Room and King of Skill. Seeing that they're running a Sun team with Togedemaru makes me pretty anxious because it means we're going to struggle with Lightning Rod on the field, as well as the fact that it's restricted is immune to two of our offensive Pokemon stab moves. In team preview, Hop and I decided I'll lead Ditto with Kyogre and Mimikyu in the back, and Hop will lead Tapu Koko with Solgaleo and Raichu in the back. This way, we might be able to copy a Venusaur on lead and gain some info about their team while being able to operate within the Sun. Tapu Koko on lead could also Volt Switch out if need be. 
so we decide before the match that we're likely going to use our lifeline in each game to talk to each other the first turn of each match. This means that we can discuss our lead matchup and figure out how to adjust. The first turn of each game can be critical to winning, so this is usually going to be our strategy moving forward. And just like that, there are three Tapu Kokos and a Lightning Rod user on the field. It's some kind of sick joke, like we can't do anything with our electric moves. Coco is uh, Thunderbolt Discharge Electroweb Dazzling Gleam. I'm thinking yeah. there's there's nothing much they can do here, but our Coco does nothing versus them. So I'm going to say um, you can probably get in the... What do we have in the back? I'm just going to Dazzling Gleam, by the way. After talking it over, we decide to just spam Dazzling Gleam to weaken the Toga to Maru and get rid of it as soon as possible. If we do this, it opens up a lot of room for Raichu, Coco, and Kyogre to do work. And after doing pretty much nothing for a few turns, I managed to get Kyogre in for free and remove both electric types from play with a Scarf Water Spout. Now, the only thing standing in Kyogre's way at this point is Venusaur, which has double speed in the sun. Getting our rain up over the sun is going to be key to winning. Both Groudon and Venusaur hit the field, meaning Venusaur is super fast, but due to our electric terrain, Raichu is actually going to be faster than it, and it lands a Psychic to nearly KO the Venusaur. And while we lose Mimikyu and Raichu in the process, both of the opponent's Pokemon are weakened enough to be picked up by another Scarf Water Spout. Groudon switches out for Charizard in a last ditch effort to set up the sun for Venusaur, but Venusaur doesn't end up protecting and we get two KOs with Water Spout again. However, things seem to be over for us as Lunala comes out and wide guards on my Water Spout. Because Kyogre is the only thing left on my side out of my three Pokemon, I'm locked into the move permanently and they can just spam wide guard to block it. Luckily, Ogre dodges a Precipice Blades as Solgaleo protects, so we get a second shot at this. And to my surprise, the Lunala doesn't wide guard the second time, allowing me to pick off the Groudon, creating a 2v1 versus Lunala, which we eventually power through and win round one. Now we're 1-0. Round 2, Hop and I find ourselves against Isabel and Cybertron. For reference, Cybertron and Battle Room are two of the best VGC players in history, with Battle Room having all of these achievements and then some, and Cybertron having won the national championships in the senior division, and having multiple top finishes at both regionals and world championships. So yeah, our first few rounds were pretty stacked. Needless to say, I was pretty nervous going into the game. Eren and Izzy are running what's known as a Zerndon Sun Team, which means this could be a great game to steal boost off the Xerneas with our Ditto if we can call which slot it's going to be in. We opt to have me lead Raichu with Mimikyu and Kyogre in the back, and have Hop lead off with Coco with Solgaleo and Ditto in the back. This way, if they lead off with a Sun Mode, Raichu can outspeed the Groudon and Venusaur to get a powerful Grass Knot off on the Groudon, or a Psychic on the Venusaur. They lead off with Incin and Venusaur, which isn't too great, but not awful for us at the same time. We discuss round one. We're probably going to get faked out is the issue. Um, I'm going to get faked out faked specifically. Out. Well, surely he breaks your fake out, right? Yeah, but that would just mean that there's if you're you Incineroar and you know you're going to get faked out, there's no reason to not just toss out a fake yeah, out you anyways. You'll press it. Yeah, so... Do we have Volt Switch on the on the Venusaur, right? Yeah, should I just, should I just switch out on the uh, Incineroar? Yeah, our best play is Volt Switch on the Venusaur to break the Focus Sash, and I'm going to attempt a Psychic, even though I'm pretty sure it's not going to work. They fake out the Tapu Koko, allowing me to Psychic the Venusaur and bring it down to its Sash. The next turn, I opt to Rising Voltage the Incineroar for major damage, and Hopcat then intelligently clicks Electroweb to pick off the Venusaur while getting good chip damage off on the Incineroar. With Venusaur down, Kyogre becomes much safer. Groudon then comes out, and that means it's a good opportunity to trade our Raichu for big damage by Grass Knotting on the Groudon. Not only that, but our Solgaleo manages to dodge a Precipice Blades and annihilates the Groudon. Out comes Entei. Realizing this is a two-player battle, I target down the Entei to create a bad situation where it's both me and Hop taking on Eren alone. From that point on, we sweep with Scarf Kyogre, as Eren has no defensive options, and we take round two convincingly. Remember how I said both round 1 and 2 were pretty scary considering our opponent's reputation? Well, round 3 is against Joe, who as I previously mentioned is a regional champion and top ranked player. Luckily he's our last huge hurdle. He's partnered with Madison, a sub in for his old partner Joam, who had to leave the tour. Joe and Madison are using a reindeer team, but they've added Venusaur on for anti-sun strategies as well as Raikou for unflinchable screen setup. But what they don't know is we have an ace up our sleeves. See, screens might be good for reducing damage, but with Psychic Fangs on our Solgaleo, we can actually break screens while dealing huge damage to it. With that thought, Hop and I decide to go Solgaleo Mimikyu mode for the first time in the tournament. Knowing we get a free Trick Room up turn 1, we save our lifeline for turn 2. Hello, hello. I'm, thinking, I'm thinking this is a good turn to discuss what happened. Okay. Um, I, think, long. I think you should go Ditto to Intimidate, because he's going to activate yeah. my weakness policy. Okay, so... I'm just going to Psychic yeah, right. Fangs the Raikou and you can go Ditto. Because he's going to activate it okay. for me. 
All right. I think that's all we're going to that. talk about there. <laughs> yeah, because we need to intimidate him. Otherwise, he's doing way too much. They set up our weakness policy for us, and we remove the light screens while dealing huge damage to Raikou. We pick off the Raikou with a rock slide as Scizor comes in. The next turn we pick off Scizor with a Flare Blitz, but Disaster strikes as our Solgaleo goes to sleep from Sash Venusaur Sleep Powder. We're on our back foot now as we could easily get swept by their Kyogre. Xerneas gets in for free and our best check for it is gone. Things are pretty dire here as they set up a Geomancy and things are pretty much all over for us as Xerneas slowly but surely cuts through our team. We end up taking our first loss of the tournament against Joe in round 3. We are now 2-1. Okay, round four. We can still make it through this tour. Uh, we're up against Captain Kid and Flygon HQ. They've got a reindeer team just like Joe, so it's time to redeem ourselves. Seeing Clefairy on the team screams follow me spam, so we lead off with Tapu Koko and Kyogre to spam spread moves in order to avoid this. And it works, as they earthquake their own Clefairy to finish it off. We trade water spots and eventually lose our Kyogre, but in the end we end up in an even better spot as we manage to get Trick Room up with Solgaleo on the field. Just like we planned, Hop activates Solgaleo's weakness policy and we click a devastating Psychic Fangs. As Zapdos hits the field, I commit to clicking Rock Slide until the Solgaleo goes down and then the tech finally comes out. Mimikyu ends up KOing itself because I was too dumb to give it an odd HP stat so we could use Curse twice without dying. The play still works though, as Curse eventually KOs Weavile and Zapdos. Uh, the Curse was actually meant to go into the Xerneas, but unfortunately we learned you can't choose Curse's target. Xerneas actually tries to stall our Ditto out of Moonblast by protecting, but that's the thing. We're not Scarfed Ditto, we ran Bright Powder because the Scarf was already on our Kyogre, and I couldn't think of a better item. We eventually win the game from them thinking a double protect is the optimal play to get our ditto to start struggling, and when the double fails we steal round 4 from the clutches of defeat. Round 5 is up and we're up against Sierra Dawn and Rickles. They have a similar team to Joe, so we have the advantage of information. We also have a mental advantage due to the emotional trauma I caused Rickles in the Smash tournament. We play the game almost exactly as we did against Joe, but we reduce the damage Solgaleo takes from Incineroar not by copying the Incineroar with Ditto, but by sending out Kyogre and getting Rain up. This match is basically just the match against Joe, but everything goes right. By the way, you know what's worse than one Kyogre? And two. Anyways, we win round five, not with Kyogre, but with the curse tech, funny enough. Two rounds to go until we make it to grand finals, and we're up against Vernius and Huzzah. We face yet another reindeer team. This is getting annoying at this point. Are we prepared? Yes. Am I still stressed by looking at the Jesus deer? Yes. Due to this, we just go for the standard Mimikyu Solgaleo lead and attempt to take the game turn 1. Unfortunately, while we do get the Trick Room off, they are a bulky set on the Kyogre and not the standard Choice Scarf set that I calced for. See, plus 2 Psychic Fangs will never one-shot a bulky Kyogre. This thing becomes a menace for the rest of the game, as it sets up enough that it starts to one-shot even outside of rain. At one point, I managed to get my ditto in and copy it, but we lose the speed tie versus it, and our little triple Kyogre match here ends with us taking a big fat L, our second loss. The chances of us top cutting are now much slim. Oh, look at that, Joe lost too. So we're still tied for first place, funny enough. Uh, never mind, we just have to win one more match. Final round, and we're up against Failboat and HMoz with their Zerndon team. We lead Solgaleo Mimikyu into Venusaur Groudon. This isn't good. Venusaur can stop Trick Room with Sleep Powder or just shut down Solgaleo entirely by putting it to sleep as well. And while Solgaleo can eat a Prespice Blades from Groudon, it really doesn't want to do that unless Trick Room goes up. But we bite the bullet and roll the dice on the Sleep Powder anyways. Everything goes perfect, from the Sleep Powder miss to Solgaleo avoiding the Prespice Blades entirely. Granted, we didn't need the Prespice Blades to miss, but it did make the game even more in our favor. We don't bother activating policy because we notice Groudon is actually slower than us, and that means Prespice Blades will activate our policy first anyways. Hop, being a genius, burns the Groudon to minimize the damage it does when activating my weakness policy, and we get huge damage off on Entei. From this point on, we just spam Rock Slide and Water Spot to snatch some KOs. In the end, it comes down to Raichu and Ogre versus Venusaur Groudon, but Raichu does its job and annihilates the Venusaur despite the sun being up thanks to its ability. It's honestly been the MVP of this tournament, fixing this matchup for us in a huge way. But Xerneas comes out and we know it's about to Geomancy. All may seem lost, but it's not over, as Ditto finally does its job and steals Xerneas' boost, allowing me to Moonblast it for the win. We made it to top cut with a 5-2 record, so who are we facing? Well, none other than Joe himself, who tries to make it interesting. Uh, are you guys ready, dude? Dude, we, you, we're, you, we're tearing it up. Let, 
Yeah, you ready, man? You ready? You guys yeah. ready to game? Up, Grand finals. Top, the top two teams. Top Roxy, three. how much are you willing to put money match on this? Joe, I'm broke. <laughs> Joe, I gotta pay bucks. rent. I gotta pay rent, dude. <laughs> you might think, yeah, well, I guess we'll just do five bucks. I'm five bucks is too much broke, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um here, here's what we'll do um loser just has to tweet out uh x person is better than me at vgc just straight up okay all right okay <laughs> all right now here's the thing hopcat you have no idea how much this means to me if if we don't win i'm blocking you <laughs> yeah right. no same same here madison there's literally no losses allowed <laughs> yeah there's a lot riding on this not for me for joe Everyone already thinks he's better than me, so the tweet wouldn't really hurt my ego much as I also think he's better than me, but it'd be so satisfying to get Joe to tweet that. We lead off with Sogalio mimic you and go for our strategy, but I know Joe and he's not going to let us get the trick room off. A double is very obvious here. So I attack the Xerneas turn 1, knowing all too well how much damage Sogalio is about to take from a water spout. Alright, live it. <laughs> Special offensive! <laughs> Give me that! It's mine! <laughs> Hopefully Joe didn't make it bulky, otherwise we're in trouble. I calc for that. Trick Room never comes out, but AV Coco can spam webs to make the game safer for our Kyogre and deal major damage to Joe's team. We take out Xerneas as Raikou hits the field. I need to be faster than this Ogre to make sure my Ditto can do work. If Hop gets the webs off from that point on, I would feel pretty good. We can then hit the water spot as much as we want, but webs never come out. Hop wild charges, and while that is a very strong option versus Kyogre, it wasn't great for us as we would have preferred the speed advantage. Coco does end up tanking the water spout even after the recoil from the wild charge in terrain thanks to the massive special defense I invested. Hop understands that we need speed and electro webs, letting me take out the Kyogre and outspeed the Raikou. With both Restricteds gone, we managed to clean up, with the only hiccup being a Swords Dancing Scizor that legitimately could have stolen the game from us, by the way, uh, but I copy it with a ditto and avoid that situation entirely. And with Joe's Incineroar slain by his own Scizor, we managed to take the tournament. I can finally collect my prize. Big W. Let's go. Huge. My heart. All right, Marcos, what do you want me to tweet, you bastard? Send him the $5. Give him money, he's poor. Say, okay, I admit it. Moxie Boosted is better than me at this game. Do you want the money or do you want the. If, it, uh, if it's the, the money, I want 20 bucks. Because I'm oh, going to get. That's the thing. If, it, it, it's, it's I'll the, give you 20. I want my dignity, bro. Get, give me your PayPal, bro. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. I'll keep my dignity over No, you have no bro. idea how clutch this is because I was actually about to get dinner with friends. If I weren't so hungry, that is. So yeah, that's how Hop and I won the VGC Smash Tournament. Hopefully we do another one of these in the future. It was such a great experience, and I had a great time playing with Hop. Thanks everyone for watching. Special thanks to Hopcat for being such a great partner. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel as I upload tons of VGC content. It'd mean a ton if you could support that with a like and a sub. Uh, and everyone's channel who is in this video is in the description down below, so be sure to check them out. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye.